All right, so I think we can get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the session. I'm Yash, and today we'll discuss two specific problems in container scheduling mechanisms that have high potential impact in the overall cost and performance of a systems, and how they can be solved using logic derived loosely from classic games like Jenga and Tetris. So let's play. Uh, let's have a look at container schedulers. Uh, as you know, schedulers are responsible for finding the optimal node where your container should be run. In general, it's a two-step process where schedulers first figure out, filter out the nodes which can fit the existing container in terms of their resources available to them, and then scores all these nodes which on the basis of several predefined parameters, and all this entire logic and intelligence of figuring out what is the best node is in the in this step. And once this scoring is done, whatever node has the highest score is chosen and the container is created there. Now, all kind of schedulers, whether default or even the highly customized one, have these two steps and are performed statically at the time when there is a new container to be placed. And this is where we'll see. So this is kind of analogous to playing a game of Tetris. Uh, each row here represents a node in the cluster with the available capacity as gaps and the utilized capacity as the blocks. And the incoming block is the container that needs to be scheduled, with the resource size being the resources it requests. So in this example, this needs four units of resource to be scheduled. Now, in the game, you use best efforts to uh, place it in the existing rows and minimizing the gaps as much as possible. And just you would want to have something like the bottom few rows are, which is densely packed system. However, as you may have understood, uh, playing this game for a while, you end up in a state with something like this, where you have gaps here and there in every which row, and make this thing playing game a little difficult. And this something similar happens in containers as well. So as resources decrease in any cluster, the optimization possibilities that scheduler have in the scoring stage tend to decrease as well. And it becomes like a best effort scenario where you have very limited choices and container has to place somewhere fast. It's kind of like going back to the game analogy, you're playing the game at a very high level and you have to perform this at an n-dimensional level because you don't just have one resource, you have CPU, memory, something else as well. And all those factors that we considered in. So because there are now lesser and lesser schedule optimizations, there are lesser efforts in densely packing the system. And we start seeing more and more fragments of such uh, available resources, which are not big enough to schedule anything new, and they are just getting left out. And if you feel adding more nodes help in this situation, it doesn't really, because sure, schedulers can now optimize the placement logic again in the new nodes that you have, but whatever has been scheduled and whatever fragments that you have in the existing cluster remain as is. And what is the impact of this? We'll just see. So let's take an example, real world. Let's say we have three nodes in the system with six or nine containers running. At this stage, we have a total of 600 millicores of CPU and 1200 MB of RAM available. Let's say we consider only these two resources. So let's say if I try to place a container C4, which is requesting just 300 millicores of CPU and 600 MB of RAM, which is much less than what uh, cluster has available, you would see that scheduling will fail because no node collectively has these two amount of resources together. And if you have any kind of auto-scaling enabled in your cluster, you would spawn out another few nodes and try to place it there. So you will be able to solve this thing directly, but it has an additional impact in the cost of your clusters. So what if there's some kind of an overlooker that can identify these kind of situations and problems and try to see if there are rescheduling options possible that can fit this container here itself. So in our example, if we move container C1 from node one to node two, we have accumulated more amount of resources in node one than the requested resources by C4. And we can place it directly here. This sounds so simple, and it is actually, if we can identify this opportunity. And one thing to note here is that this will not be possible by regular schedulers because once containers are scheduled, there's no, uh, they're not even touched. And which is fair enough because you don't want your containers to be killed off without uh, user inputs. And what we do here is basically we generate recommendations in the form of move and place, which could be implemented on the clusters like Kubernetes and 
using their underlying APIs and constructs like node and pod affinities. And we have multiple migration strategies, singular and multiple. And uh, in singular, we displace only one container to place a bigger container and recursively solve for the smaller containers until we can place it. And in multiple, we remove multiple smaller containers to fit a big one and try to see if we can solve this thing. And in either of the cases, we always, always uh, try to remove a con overall capacity lesser than what we have to place so that our problem because smaller and smaller as we go. And all of these things are done not at real time in the cluster. We are doing some kind of simulations in memory map and then try to figure out these things. Whatever strategy gives us the best number of results is the one that is chosen. And we can run it after a certain number of iterations and uh, this helps us place it. Or if not, this is the regular thing which is going on will continue as it is. So this is one problem that is what we solved. There's another problem that is very, very invisible but is a significant one. So let's take again a container example here. So let's say if we have three nodes and we have six containers running. Now if you look at a closer look, node one has as high as 90% CPU usage at this point, but memory usage is very less. On node three, it's completely opposite story. You have 20% CPU use, but memory usage is very high. Which means all the CPU intensive nodes are somehow scheduled on node one, which is already starved for CPU. And all those applications will start like fight among themselves to get a hold of CPU and they might get throttled. In case of memory, they might even be killed or restarted. And that's where this problem comes in. You have, this problem has a huge potential to cause abrupt performance degradations and even potential downtimes in the system. So how do we solve this? It's quite simple actually. Just keep a balance. So let's say if we swap the most imbalance causing applications in node one and node three. So CPU intensive application highest is C2 in node one and node three has the highest CPU intensive application as memory intensive application as uh, C2 as well. So if we swap these two, the crucial impact this has is now the resource usage in all the two nodes are much more equitable. You now have close to 40 and 50% of resource utilization in all the two nodes and that means all these applications can now handle any sudden extreme burst load or traffic without any degradations as such. And this is kind of analogous to playing a game of Jenga now, where each row represents a node again and the block is a container. And in each turn, we, just like in the game, we remove the block which has least contribution to the overall balance of the entire Jenga building. Same way we swap the containers that have causing the most imbalance causing the most amount of disparity in terms of source usage. And what we do here is we identify these imbalance by a mathematical construct called entropy, which is bas basically could be a number in, in cases of uh, just considering two resources, it's a CPU to memory ratio. What we do is we try to have an equal amount of ratio on all the three nodes of whatever nodes that you have in the system. And we aim for that with a kind of a swap recommendation. So we do these swaps regularly, periodically, for a fixed number of time, and until we can no longer perhaps observe a significant change in the uh, entropy values in each of the nodes. And I'll just showcase the results that we have observed in one of our ex executions. So we have run this in one of my previous forms in a test Kubernetes environment that used to have heavy cloud nodes costing more than $2 per hour. And with autoscalers, we used to spawn out two extra nodes in case of resource current situations. And what we observed was for, for running this for a couple of days, we were able to reduce the auto spawn out significantly as much that as we're able to save close to $5,000 of cost every month. And we were all astonished by this because it was close to 30% of savings. And it shows how impactful these seemingly invisible problems and minor optimization could turn out to be. So, that's all we have. In case you would like to know more about the implementation details on Kubernetes that we have done and perhaps contribute or collaborate, here's a GitHub link for the project and we'll hope to see you there. So that's all I have. In case there are any questions, we have a minute for that.
actually no it, all that is limited is the amount of time you would take more to uh, to basically schedule the pod so let's say if you have uh, maybe 5 seconds of time for example to schedule your container that you can take extra because let's say if you're doing this at run time and you want to spawn out a new node let's say if you're in cloud provider like gcp you would want to add more machines to the system that will take much more time then you can rather have a few seconds of extra time and then that can be provided as an input to the algorithm and that will consider okay you have 5 seconds so whatever the recursive logic that we have we can basically try to prune the every branch of search space that we have and look for until the time is reached out if we can find a solution yes if it not whatever happens is still better than what would have been the case otherwise so that as a, as an input we have how much time or deadline that you have to complete this uh, scheduling mechanism rescheduling i would say uh if there any other questions uh, uh i think we're done if you have any thing to discuss with me please find me and uh will be happy to answer questions so thanks for joining and have a rest of the conference thank you